I went on a bus tour to Canada when, uh, and um, it was to the shrines, you know the shrines in Canada, one uh, St. Andrew, no, St. Brother Andrew, right? Another one was, um, I can't remember the shrine, but went to the shrines anyway. And the Franciscan in charge of the tour, he's kept talking about, well, you should join the orders, but you can always leave again if you start. Just give it a chance. You, you, you don't worry about leaving. It, it's easier to leave than to get in. So then I thought I would try it. And I looked up, um, they had little booklets in New York of uh, different orders. So I um, looked up and I had great devotion to the Sacred Heart and to Jesus. And I um, I picked out this one, Mission Sisters of the Sacred Heart. And I rang them up and they told me to come up to the high school in at um, Port, uh, what is it called? Port Washington, isn't it? Port Washington Avenue. And then I went up there and I met a very nice sister and she talked to me and told me all about the order. And so I was very interested and when I went back and forward, she gave me a spiritual talks and all that. And then one day she said, you've got to go up to the novitiate in West Park. So they took me up to the novitiate in West Park. I went in there and I met all the sisters and they sort of looked at me. I think I still had some makeup on. <laughs> but they all said, oh, who is this coming, you know? So I went in there and they said, um, oh, they're very welcoming. Sister Camille was lovely. She was a very saintly nun. And But I found it very hard there at first because, it's, you know, you had to um, get up early. I thought early, 5 o'clock was early in the morning. But no, no, it's not early now because when you're older, you get, you know, you get up early. But um, so then I got used to it. But it was lovely there. We went for walks in the mountains. We went for uh, walks down to the river, uh, the River Hudson, I think, that there, there. And then we went, um, even we went walking on the river. One year went walking on the river because it was so cold. The ice was so thick. And then in the, uh, later on, we went over to a field behind the house, ice skating. So we had a great time in the novitiate. <laughs> but I didn't like the part of getting up in the morning or being near to someone, you know, in the bedroom. But but you got used to that. That's how I started going to. Um, I mean, getting up early was. I thought it was bad, but it wasn't really. But then I found very hard was the Latin. We said the prayers in Latin. Our office was in Latin, and we, um, but I got, I think the Latin is more of a rhythm, too. I liked it. When we went back to the English, it wasn't the same rhythm of the office. You know, it was the Latin sort of clicked in together when you were t saying it. You know, it was beautiful. But the English wasn't so good when you went back to the English. And then I, um, then I went to, I met Sister uh, Valentina, Mother Valentina, and she told me that she would like me to study for, to be a di di dietitian. And then I was going to go to Melbourne, to the hospital there, to work as a dietitian. And that's how I landed in Melbourne. And I got there, it was a terrible place too. They had a St. Benedict's, an old hospital, belonged to the Mercy Sisters, and they had um, they had moved into a new hospital in the city. They left this old hospital, and our sisters took it over. But it was, um, we, di we didn't stay long there. We built our own hospital, and we got out of St. Benedict's, and the new hospital was called St. Francis Avery Cabrini. But now it's changed to Cabrini Health, took away poor Francis. But anyway, um, I stayed there for 24 years. Then, uh, you know, I organized the kitchen. And then after that, the sister Irene Conley, she decided to open a college for 
nursing aides. So I said to myself, I must get out of this kitchen. So I'll go <laughs> I joined the nursing I joined the nursing aides. And I after that then I got work up in the hospital, the nursing in the hospital, you know. You don't do you do the, the hard work, you know. Uh a nursing aide doesn't do uh any office work, just does all the hard work. So anyway, after that, one day, Sister Con Irene called me, and uh, she gave me such a shock. She said, um, do you know what? We have no pastoral care in this hospital. And I said, oh, and I want you to start it. So I said, oh gosh, how can I start pastoral care? I had to go and um, go to other hospitals and find out how to run the pastoral care. Then I had to go to the priest in those hospitals, the chaplain, and he um, told me how to go about it, you know. He gave me all the, the, uh, the how to read up on it and what to do about it and get in touch with all the Jewish and the Episcopalian and all the different uh, religions. So I was really worn out, but I enjoyed it so much afterwards. You know, I didn't enjoy it because there's so many. We had one ward there for cancers only, can you imagine? And there were all so many young people were dying and that. But that part, I um, I helped. I got to know a lot of people. You get to lot, meet a lot of people in your impossible care because the people can never rely on you and they sort of call you for everything and lean on you and... You, you hear all the sad stories, too. And then um, that kind of gets you after a while. But then after, but, but the, we went out places. We went to um, conferences. We went to um, different uh, uh, d different orders. We went all, met all the different uh, sisters in different orders. And they came to us. and. It was wonderful in Melbourne too. I'm awful. They were great. The people were great for barbecues. We we're going to a lot of barbecues and uh, people inviting you out. And one was oh, falling over each other. To, 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 you have to come to my house. I have to come to your house. So at the end up, it was oh, I was getting tired of barbecues. And the end up, I just said no because I mean your spiritual life comes first. Too many barbecues. And, and so, um, but we had a lovely, um, a lovely chapel there. What's what's your what's your spiritual life like? Oh, you mean now or then? Well, let's go back to then, and then come back then. Oh, then it was very very good. Really, we had uh, we got up early in the morning for uh, for office, and then we had hours meditation, and then we had mass. Then after mass, we went to work, of course. But then in the evening, we had a long evening of spirituality. We had um, a reading, a spiritual reading. I thought, you know, we're getting up early in the morning. I thought we'd go to bed early, but it, it went on till 9.30, spiritual reading. And people were doing their knitting and talking, and, re and then somebody else would read the spirituality. Usually it was Rodriguez, this Jesuit, and then with Mother Cabrini too. And we, you know, every night it was, the spirituality was terrific. Uh, you know, we all wore the black hat at that time. And um, cause that didn't make us any spiritual, but you had that, you know, you're sitting uncomfortable and you have the long black habit on till 9.30 at night. And uh, but then when Vatican II came, everything changed. Tell me about those changes for you. Well, the Vatican II came. First of all, they came. The, some Jesuit came to the to the convent from Rome, and he wanted to do this and that. And but uh, the spirituality still was the same. We didn't change anything, but we had more relaxation. We didn't have to, um, you know, sometimes before Vatican II, we had to go outside with Mother Superior. We all, once a week, maybe we'd go outside and go out in the garden, and nobody would talk, only Mother Superior. 
But that was, as soon as Vatican II came, that all changed. And we all um, would would have to, some would go out somewhere to visit some museum or some something you know interesting, or go to a conference. And we still had a lot of spirituality. It, we still got up early in the morning, but the office changed over to English. But it was still, we still had uh, meditation and we had mass, and we had a lot of spirituality there, thank God. So uh, I want to ask you, isn't Mother Cabrini's charism for you to be out in the world? Yeah, that was not the, not the way before Vatican II. Okay. No, but after Vatican II, everything, that Jesuit came over and showed us how the right way to do it, how to relax and how to have your spirituality and be able to talk, give your own opinion. He, you know, it made things much different for us. He, um, uh, before that, we were afraid to open our mouths, you know, we were just we're like little mice. No. <laughs> so this is interesting because you've had the experience before <coughs> yeah. and after. Mm -hmm. um, so, but you live in community the whole time. All the time, So tell yeah. me about living in community. Oh, I love living in community because we pray together and we work together and we laugh together. And we're always, and the, the sisters were a great example, you know. You know, you think your sisters, but they're so easy to get along with. And we had wonderful time. We really had. And we had, you know, we talked about Mother Cabrini. We talked about different spiritualities, usually Jesuits, you know. The Jesuits were our speci speciality. And, um, but now we've changed over. We go to other uh, uh, Francisc. We're now with the Franciscans. <laughs> we changed over, but anyway, we um, we enjoyed the spirituality. Was wonderful. Yeah. And and how how is your community life now? Well, it's different now. You mean this and here? Yeah, where you are now. Oh well, we we This is even better. We have more time to pray. We pray all day, all day. Because that is our, all our we can do. Not for me, but not, some of the sisters do work in that. But for the my age group, it's all prayer. The morning till night. And the can, whole day is prayer. Can you tell me about that prayer? I don't. Oh, yes. In prayer, we get up in the morning. We pray to, um, to the Holy Spirit. I have a special prayer for the Holy Spirit. And. Um, then after that, we uh, we make an hour meditation again. You get up early again, but uh, now I don't feel bad about getting up because I don't need need the sleep like you did when you're young, you know. When you're old, you have to get up early, and then I um, then we go for breakfast. And after that, we watch the um, the rosary on um, EWTN nine o'clock. Then after that, we do our um, we another spiritual reading. Uh, you know, we have so much books to read at the moment. I have so many to catch up with, and we have one thing after another. And then the lovely thing is we have eleven thirty mass. That is beautiful, and the priest gives us a lovely homily. You know, really, all about the reading today is about. You know, the reading was about. Uh, I'll never forget you, my people. I will keep you in the hand, my, my hand, my. What's that one again? I will never forget you, my people. I have loved you and the hand of my hand. No, that one. That was the reading today, and it, it, it really. Uh, he always makes a few jokes in that too. The priest the other day said to us, "You know what he said? I couldn't believe it." His name is, I better not tell his name, but he um, said, you know, I was talking to this sister in Africa, her name is Sister Claire, and she said to me, you know, we should pray for Brother Putin, pray for Brother Putin, and we all laughed at that. But then, uh, <laughs> that's again the things that comes out sometimes. 
But the prayer here is wonderful, yeah. And then we have Vespers in the evening. And then after Vespers, we have our, lunch, our evening meal. And after that, we're sort of free, but we can do some more reading, or we can go and talk to each other in the, in, you know, in the room if I want to talk to someone. You need to talk sometimes, you know. And um, it's wonderful. I'm really very happy here now. Our whole, our whole life is prayer, morning to night. So we must be very saintly, but we don't look at them. <laughs> We're very saintly, but we, and we pray for people too. We pray, get their first name, pray for them, and you know, and then over oh, the phone too, they ring us up. And then, like today, I had that video of, from Spain about confirmation, and that uh, I took a while to work out what it was, but I, I saw the picture of the Holy Spirit. Then I said, confirmation. And um, so, in a way, I it's really. And that's true. So that's your current ministry, pretty much. Yes, is the of prayer. Mm -hmm. Prayer is all is very important. Well, uh, I mean, this time of year life, you know. Yes. But there was plenty of time before, but then you had work. But now it's all prayer. That's beautiful. Thank God. Thanks be to God for the prayer. So, to be able to pray for other people too. Tell me about this life. What would, how would you tell a person about this life? About religious life? Yeah, your religious life. Oh, my religious life. Oh, well, my religious life, I am um, very happy. I'm very happy to be a religious, and I would recommend it to anybody. It's it's very very happy time. You have no problems. You might get sick or something, but it's always nurses. At the moment, we have four nurses in the community, so we're well looked after, and um, our sister Sabir is a nurse as well, and so we um, we have a wonderful time because we. We have each other, you know, like community you have, you're not alone. You're, you have other sisters to talk to and you hear their problems and you listen to them. Listening is very important. You listen to what they have to say and then you say, well, if they have all these problems and I'm, I'm pretty good. I haven't got any of those problems. <laughs> you know, it's a very, very, um, our Lord sort of calls you. You wonder why he calls you, but there's a reason for it. I think of using you for to help other people and to pray for other people and to offer up your your little pains and that's for other people. You know, it's a wonderful life, religious life. It really is. I really um, thank the Lord for giving me this vocation to to be able to serve him and love him and um, make him known to other people and to pass the message on and do it through um, through the phone or writing or talking. I would love to everyone to become religious, everyone I meet. And every time I meet someone, if they say to me, say a prayer for me, I would say it right on that spot. I'll say it right away, because later on I might forget. So I, as soon as I say, say a prayer for me, I say it not, not inside, I'm quietly, prayer, I pray for them. And I would really love everyone to join the Cabrini sisters. They're the best in the world. If you ever read up on Mother Cabrini's life, she had a hard time at first, but she was a very lovable person and loved everyone and loved the, the refugees and she loved she loved everyone. You know, she got on with everyone. She had that way with her. She would do anything for anyone. If you ever read, I read her life story too. It's beautiful. And um, so, so I would ask you now, please, to come and join us. And we would love to meet you. Come to Sacred Heart Convent. 
71 Jackson Street. <laughs> and we will embrace you with open arms and give you a big hug and get, ask you, please come and join us. We need young people and the Lord needs people in his vineyard. It's very short at the moment. He needs priests and nuns and good lay people too. So that's my message. Thanks be to God. Right? <laughs> As we say, nailed it. <laughs> 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 <laughs>